Hello, it's Gil Johnson, your Prevo Motorhome Consultant. And today I'll be making a case for a product from Micro Air. It's a soft start unit. They refer to these as their easy start and why that's important to you. If you didn't follow the trailer, let me just highlight a couple of reasons why this is important. The first being, many of us have trace inverters. And through those inverters, we powered some of our roof air conditioners typically one air conditioner per inverter. Those trace units are no longer available, although there is some support. There will be a time, probably sooner rather than later, when support is no longer available, and we'll have to make a decision. We're going to move to new inverters. Those new inverters, regardless of manufacturer, are not as robust as those trace units were. When it comes to startup surge currents, the new breed of inverters just can't hold up to those trace units. It's pretty evident, just look at the weight difference between the trace inverters and the typical 4,000 watt inverter that you'll replace it with today, and there's a difference of like 40 pounds. Most of that comes in the fact that there's much fewer and smaller transformers in them, which is kind of critical to uh, the ability to, to handle surge. So what is this that we're going to talk about today? These soft start units as they're referred to in the industry. Uh, well, maybe we should back up just a little bit and talk about the two ways that you can cut down on startup current on an air conditioning unit. Any motor for that matter, but the compressor motors seem to be the worst. There's hard start capacitors and there's a soft start units. Hard start capacitors used to be something that was factory installed in all units, but you know, from a cost perspective and wanting to make sure that the units don't last too long, uh, maybe that's not really true, the second part, but they stopped putting those in there. What they were was nothing more than a piggyback capacitor with uh, some kind of switching mechanism in it that would, uh, would provide more startup current to get that motor initially kicked off. Well, where's this surge come from anyway? When a motor is not spinning, it's almost a short circuit in there until it starts to spin. So you've got this lockup current that's referred to in a motor uh, circuit that it's required to get it spinning. To reduce that spinning startup current, there's always a start capacitor. So hard start capacitors are one solution that uh, primarily gets installed in older units today. As units start to age, their current draw becomes more on startup. And then there's the soft start units, not as prevalent in these 120 volt compressor applications. Much, much more prevalent in the three phase, huge uh, air conditionings or air conditioners or even air compressors for that matter. But MicroAir has decided to tackle this, this uh, issue with the smaller air conditioners. And I gotta tell you, they did a pretty good job. Not only did they do, do a good job in, in uh, coming up with a, a solution that actually takes care of the problem, their packaging is as good as it's going to be. And a nice box that's totally enclosed, weather tight, you know, uh, the, the wire lengths off of that are exactly what's needed for a Dometic rooftop unit, and I'm sure it's probably the same for any other. Um, so packaging well, obviously the first part, the technology is perfect. Uh, and then the other part is that making, they know that the hobbyist will want to install these things. So their instructions are second to none and their instructions are specific to each one of the different kinds of air conditioning units. Of course they have the generic drawings too if yours is a unit maybe a basement air that's not covered. Very simple to install, doesn't take an hour to do it, but with anything that's that involves electricity if you don't feel comfortable or you don't know what you're doing around electrical circuits we all know they can kill you so um, you know, there's nothing wrong with hiring somebody that has this expertise and giving them the instructions in the product and letting them install them. Uh, besides the electrical issue that we got to be concerned with, you got to get up on the roof if you got rooftop units. So there's been people that have obviously fallen off the tops of these and, you know, that outcome is not always very good. So two safety aspects, electrocution can kill, falling off the top of one of these coaches can kill. 
If you're not comfortable with either other, either one of those, hire somebody that knows how to do that. I'd go through the whole how to install this, but quite frankly, there's videos that, that touch on the install and their instructions are really right there. But instead, I want to focus on what we're achieving. So I went with these Magnum 4000 hybrid units when I replaced my trace units. And although my remote panels inside the coach, they don't raise a red alarm, when those air conditioners start, if I were to go into the fault history, I'll actually see faults that didn't actually trigger the alarm light. So in my case, on my remote panels, I'm seeing that I'm getting an alarm in the fault logs that shows excess current drawn in excess of 200 amps at, at 24 volts. That's substantial. Uh, not enough to raise the red light, maybe only because the alarm condition lasts for such a short period of time. But I'm pretty convinced that if it shows up in the fault log over time, best case, it's going to reduce the life of these units. Worst case, it's going to substantially reduce that life. So startup current on any motor, compressors, again, one of the worst, is that you can expect to see, depending on whose stats you look at, is four to eight times the normal startup current, the normal run current can be uh, seen in startup current. So the compressors on my air conditioners, well, let's say they, they pull about 10 amps, the compressor alone. So it would be, it would not be unusual to see 40, 60, 80 amps at startup time. Well, these units or any 4,000 watt unit, they're only intended to draw to, on continuous power about 30 amps and they can take some surge. That surge, surge is substantial. So unfortunately, I didn't have an O-scope to actually do this testing. I did use a clamp on amp meter and you know, looked at it the best I could. And I could see that, bef and I'm using the, the meters on my remotes as well. Clearly not that responsive in the case of a surge. But I can see that with the Easy Start unit installed, that my, my startup current is going down from the 200 reported in the fault history to what appears to be somewhere around 70 to no more than 100 amps startup after this easy start unit was installed. Uh, the installation of this unit and why this one's a little bit different than the others that you'll find out there, and again they're not prevalent in the 120 volt compressor uh, application, but this one has a smart learning feature. So after installed you go through a procedure of turning the unit on and off five times so that it understands what the startup current and the run current is. It creates from that a ramp. So it'll ramp up the current in a four phase ramp to reduce that current. And then once it gets to running, it'll actually take itself out of the circuit with a bypass relay. Exactly what you want to see. Um, so that, that was pretty intuitive. And the other thing that we have to be concerned with is that uh, if an air conditioning unit cycles on and off at short durations, that can cause a substantial startup current as well. So in that compressor, when that unit first starts off, stops, it has a substantial amount of head pressure. If that compressor motor were to start up right after that, it would be fighting that head pressure. So one of the other things to, to do to prolong the life of the air conditioner and to get past this startup current issue is that you need a timer. You need to make sure that that compressor can't cycle on and off, you know, every few seconds. So what Easy Start has done is they've built in a five minute timer. Kind of unique the way they did that timer as well. On some of these coaches they have switches to turn off the DC power to the thermostat and control circuits to cycle them and others to turn it off the 120 volt AC. Well in this unit, as long as there's AC power applied to the unit, it's going to start counting that clock down as soon as the, the unit turns off, the compressor turns off. And even if there's a disruption of AC power at some point after that, it'll remember how much of that five minute timer has already elapsed. And when AC power is reintroduced, it'll only count the amount of time left to get to that five minute timer. Another pretty intuitive way of taking care of that. So I've got this unit in there. My air conditioners start as I would expect them to. At this point, I haven't cycled them through a half dozen times. I'd say the unit does exactly what it's supposed to do, at least near term. We'll have to put it through some long-term testing. Um, 
Why these aren't installed on every coach when it's produces, totally beyond me. Other than the fact that you look at a Dometic rooftop air conditioner that's, uh, let's call it $1,200. This unit is, it's $300 retail. Um, certainly if the OEM started getting into this, they'd be far less, but it does add quite a bit of cost. Of course, if we look at our conversions, converters today, their current offerings are in that $2 million mark. So, you know, if you're going to run two of your air conditioners off of your inverters, or like some of them do today with some of their new power plants, they're getting it all four air conditioners off their inverters. That's a small price to pay to lengthen the life of the inverters and to not, uh, not have so much concern with that startup current. So, uh, you know, I said these are about $300. There is a discount uh, to anybody that wants to order one. Um, so the discount code will show up at the end of this video and that'll get you $25 off. And for most of us, we're gonna be running two of those units, two air conditioners that run off of inverters. So it's not terribly expensive, but I gotta tell you, Losing one of these on the road, one of these inverters is not what none of us look for. So we really kind of depend on them for more things than most might think. You know, traditionally the inverter's there to help me out when I'm parked and I don't have power. But for many of us, that's how we're supplying 120 volts to a coach as it's going down the road. Only on the hottest days do I start the generator so that I can run more than my two roof airs and my, my Prevo dash air. So pretty important to all of us, I think. Um, I certainly don't want to replace these any sooner than I want. So from my perspective, reducing the current, giving me somewhat of an insurance policy that should allow me to lengthen the life of my inverters, it just makes sense. So if this looks like it's something smart for you, go out and take a look at them. They call it the Easy Start 364. I've got a link here that'll show you where you can find more information on them. If you found value in this video, please feel free to share and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Until the next video, have a great day.